Hello. <laughs> well, um, I'm recently back from the uh, Raspberry Pi party in Cambridge, uh, where I went with my family and we had uh, an awful lot of fun. Um, now, uh, actually, the uh, the children are busy playing games right now, <laughs> just before their bedtime. So I've got little hope of getting them on. Um, but uh, okay, I'll say with the uh, Pi party, there were some amazing talks. Uh, there was lots of cool gear. I went slightly mad in the market, and I'll show you what I got there. Um, Helena also kind of discovered the idea of conference swag, and with the conference swag, she went ever so slightly crazy and came back with, I think, five blue VNC ducks. Yes, five. Um, not sure she quite got how it's supposed to work, but that's all right. So... I think I will get to what I came back with and then we can consider what we can do with it. So uh, let me just switch over to here. So that's my conference badge. And what was cool about this, and I suppose I've seen it done in a couple of other conferences, was that this, okay, there's sponsorship and all this, but what was cool was the wearable schedule that shows some of the sessions and drop-ins and workshops. Um, now, uh, most of those, I mean, Helena got involved with things where they did LED badges and made some LED throwies. Right. Um, so, Raspberry Pi Party goodies. This is not the Pi Party goodies. These are just random goodies I've had delivered. Um, so, <clears throat> first thing I got uh, was from eBay, just some long headers that I can go and use for various projects. Um, then as well with those, and those are going to be quite handy, and I've got a low number of projects where I'm going to need long headers. Um, so a bunch of these, just uh, female to female, because I never seem to have enough, so I bought a bunch of them. And uh, this one here, now this is going to be quite a lot of fun. That, and we're going to maybe get, go and try that out on, uh, on the uh, Bluetooth project we had trouble with. That's a logic analyzer, a USB logic analyzer. I don't know how much it's up for, but uh, um, this is actually on the advice from last week. Um, so someone said, I think this is compatible with the Salia hardware. Um, so I'll probably, in another video, try and get this up and running and see if we can see. First, I'll do something like an Arduino with a known protocol where I know it works. Then we can try it on the BLE where we don't know what's working. Um, so this might help with that. Okay, so what did I pick up? Oh, and the other thing I should get open because you kind of vaguely saw it last week was this stuff from Dangerous Prototypes, which was a uh, just it was a kind of a random piece of pick a PCB, um, and I picked up a Bus Pilot, which is another kind of logic analyzer. So uh, this is a Bus Pirate PCB only. But uh, the bill of materials is online. The software, I think, is uh, easy to get. Is that uh, is that the bus pirate or is that the uh, the logic analyzer? Hello, Paul. <laughs> um, so Paul's just asked. It has a SPI, ITC, and UART decode as well as some others. Hopefully, he means the uh, this uh, logic analyzer. So that would be really cool. Um, now this thing, PCB only. Uh, if I can get the uh, ah the normal logic analyzer. Okay, so this logic analyzer could be really handy then. SPI and I2C decode as well as UART decode. Awesome. Gonna have fun with that. Now this also I suppose has various decoding, and I suppose it is also a logic analyzer. Um, but this is just the board. So uh, perhaps I can go and um, try and get some parts on the bill of materials and build this because this I think would be another cool thing to add to my lab. Okay. So at the Pi Party, so the first thing was absolutely bucket loads of stickers. So everybody on the way in on each day, and we went for two days, uh, me and my family got a bag. Hold on, I'll hold it up here because uh, Coke Club on one side, Raspberry Pi on the other. Um, and it was full of sweeties and stickers and goodies. And there were people talking about the Me Arm Pi, which is now apparently on Kickstarter. Uh, there was lots of stuff about Magpie, you know, I mean, lots of sponsorship, and I suppose you'd expect that at a conference event. Um, stickers everywhere. However, goodies. So among the kind of goodies people were getting, um, 
stuff like this. So this is a rather awesome Pimeroni drum hat. So that is, I believe, you know, you tap it with your fingers and you get, uh, you know, triggers it triggering on a pie. Um, so that came in one of the goodie bags. Um, in another goodie bag, because I got one on another day, um, I, there was a scroll fat. Now, in these bags, there were also sweeties. So I said to, because uh, young Jonathan was about to go, oh, I don't want this, I want sweeties, with his one. I said, okay, um, I'm sure you're going to get to play with my lab, but I will give you all the sweeties, and you can give me the electronics you're not interested in. So I got a fat DAC as well. So there's some awesome bits to go and play with and connect to some Raspberry Pis. That'll be kind of fun. Um, everyone, I think, got a, uh, a notebook on my Pi. There was, again, this is all sponsorshipy things. Um, there was a couple of these kicking around, which are always kind of handy. I mean, I might, you know, attach them onto robots. I've done that before, where I've used a Pi and just kind of left one of these on top, in fact, just so I have the, uh, um, the pins there handy. Um, and there were pens, and there were wrist bracelets that had the uh, GPIO pins written on them as well. Um, so alongside the stuff we got for free, there was, oh, and uh, hold on, sorry, these were kind of cool, uh, Nyan Computer Beer Mats. Now, they had this special beer at the event, and I suppose I don't talk much on this about beer, but um, they had, uh, what was it, um, Irration Ale, which apparently is a special brew they've made for the Raspberry Pi, and this is the Fuzzy Duck Brewery, who turn up at PyCon as well, uh, which was a nice, you know, quite hoppy, malty beer, proper British ale, with a hint of raspberry. Not a fruit beer, just a hint. So that was kind of cool. Um, what other goodies have I got now? We're getting into goodies I bought. So first thing I bought was two Raspberry Pi W's. This one's already in a cool case. Um, and I think this was a Mod My Pi case um, with an SD card. Uh, it came, basically, I bought it and then I bought a bunch of bits and bobs like the um, connectors, the adapters. Now, the, uh, this is a Zero W. Let's see if I can get into this. I popped this together in the uh, hotel and there's a bit of a tale in this. I had the vague hope that I would be able to buy a bunch of bits at that market and I'll get to all the bits and build a robot in the hotel. But I was uh, somewhat scuppered by the fact that actually um, Pi Zero has come without headers. So I'd have needed a soldering iron and the uh, robot kit needs a tiny screwdriver and I didn't have one of the right size in the hotel. Um, so that was slightly, uh, slightly awkward. But yeah, you get all of the things like the OTG adapter. So I got two Pi Zero Ws. Um, and uh, I then discovered from, and I'll demonstrate this perhaps a bit later, um, at the VNC stand, that all the Pi Zeros, the Zeros and the Zero Ws, the uh, OTG can be used not just to power it, but with a couple of configs on this uh, SD card, can be set up to give you Ethernet. Now, if you set that up to give you Ethernet, um, and you've set up a uh, Bonjour Zero Conf client on your Windows computer or your Mac or your Linux computer or what have you, um, you can then go plug this in, go to raspberrypi.local, and you'll be able to SSH into that. Oh, you need to put the blank SSH file as well so it turns it on, uh, turning on SSH. Um, you can then maybe, once you've added that, bridge that to your local Ethernet. So then you don't need any external hub or any external things. You can do it with one USB to USB micro cable from your PC and you then directly can get access to your zero which is really really handy um, and I did get to play with that a little bit in the hotel um, and I've already got this in the stick so perhaps uh, I'll go into detail on that or at the very least I'll add a link where um, the, uh, Andrew Maholland who's quite active in the Pi community uh, has done a, a fairly good um, gist, a github gist on how it works so uh, let's uh, just pop that on there um, and I think this bag is full of just the uh, connectors for that. So uh, other things I picked up. Um, so I bought an Explorer hat because if you may remember, Helena got an Explorer hat pro parts kit, but not an Explorer hat pro. Um, and every time I checked, they weren't in stock. But Pi Maroni were at the event. Um, 
and uh, I went a little bit nuts. I might have spent uh, my robot budget for three months in uh, in about um, ten minutes flat um, because there was a market just full of Raspberry Pi goodies, electronic goodies, headers, tins of uh, components, um, you know, cases. There was uh, some some really cool stuff. So this is for Helena to play with. Um, so that she's yeah, so she can actually start interacting with that now. I suppose it can go alongside what she's also doing with the uh, um, micro bit. And there was some micro bit stuff at the uh, Raspberry Pi party as well. Because I suppose it's kind of spawned off. So after seeing a recommendation of this, I've also gone for one of these. Now they were talking about these. I think on one of the Pi Maroni things. And I've got this thing, which is kind of slightly ineffectual and it's done a job for me before a few times but I think this came in some uh, funny little toolkit off the front of a magazine about 15 to 20 years ago so it was time to replace it and they had this on the stand and I was oh yes okay so that was a bit of an impulse purchase hold on I'm going to put that stick back in that pie because it's at risk of getting lost <laughs> so let's uh, just pop that in there Uh, so I'm hoping that will help in uh, places where I do need a solder sucker. Um, spare tube, so that's interesting. There's a tube there. Maybe it just kind of gets gunged up or starts to deform or something. Okay. Um, so I bought the speaker fat. Now the reason I bought the speaker fat, um, and I think I mentioned this before, is it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, let's uh, see if I can... How do you get into this thing? Uh, <laughs> So, I'm not generally, uh, well, I mean, I do like to do audio things, but uh, it's not quite robotics. Um, okay, so they've got some mounting screws. Okay, so they haven't put the bits in, so I'll need to solder those bits on. Um, that's not a problem. Uh, and there might be a bit of a session of soldering to be had later, but... Um, I mean that's absolutely gorgeous and then look at that I mean that is just the most beautiful beautiful design of a PCB um, the, the buttons don't do anything so it's not like those are you know actual GPIOs um, and I suppose if you put this in it doesn't have the long headers so it might be nice maybe to replace that with something with longer headers but I wouldn't want to ruin the look of it so maybe I want to stack it on top of something with long headers um, where I could maybe build one with just some buttons for uh, stop, play, and go. Um, I don't believe these are, any of these are touch pads. I don't think that's how it works. But there is, yeah, there are LEDs along here, so you do actually get your VU. Um, so I think this would be great fun to get this together and maybe just make a little tiny music player. Um, so that would be a, an awesome little project and. Uh, I think when I get into a session of soldering, uh, I'll be putting headers on that alongside putting headers on all the uh, the Pi Zeros. Uh, let's put all the bits in so they're all kept together. Uh, right. Uh, oh, um, I think that came in another um, goodie bag that one of the children was with here have this. So coupe flotilla case, I think for a Pi 3. I don't know, does it say which version of a Pi? It doesn't say. Okay, Raspberry Pi not included, well of course. Um, ah, awesome business card from somebody. They've managed to get somebody to do a metallic thing. Um, and I think what's really cool is they've very much got that, uh, the uh, micro bit look on that. So I think that's pretty awesome. Um, I have to find out where they got that card done because that's beautiful. Um, right, we're getting closer to the end. So this was just a kit of bits and bobs for the uh, the Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, I may have already raided parts of it. Uh, you've got your OTG adapter. Oh, no, that's your HDMI, I think. Mini HDMI, HDMI adapter. OTG adapter. Some feet. But what's really awesome is you've got lots of different... So you've got right angle. You've got two sets of straight male. You've got female. So the fact that there's all these different types of headers for the Pi Zero, and I suppose one of these kits will do for two Pi Zeros, really, because um, you've got pretty much everything else you need. 
Um, although this kit doesn't come, I believe, with the SD card, which is the only only downside. Um, and I haven't got enough SD cards for all of them. Oh, that's um, all right. And the uh, bar the stickers, and uh, I can't really get the laptop under the camera, but I'm using it, and uh, I've had fun peppering my stick my laptop with stickers. Uh, we got a whole bunch of various so this is uh, Cotswold Jam um, and uh, there's someone else who was uh, from where I was from where I grew up in Gloucestershire so we had a good old talk and he gave me a whole bunch of stickers um, the most useful sticker actually um, I had a couple of stickers that have the uh, GPIO pins for the Raspberry Pi broken out um, I don't know if I can this might be disconcerting for a moment uh, let me see if I can just bring the camera over um, and I've stuck those onto my laptop here um, so that is the GPIO pins for a Pi right next to my normal laptop which is a really handy thing to have I think just to be able to uh, you know have that when working on the code and working on the various other things um, I suppose you may have those elsewhere but let's just get that to focus again um, right so the last but probably not least was uh, the Camjan or the Pi Hut Camjan robot kit, which is what I was going to try and make a robot out of. Uh, and and um, I started to kind of record and then realized, hold on, I'm missing some essential bits to make this work. Um, so uh, that was another zero I bought just to try and make this robot kit. Um, and it comes with a tiny bit of breadboard, two of those fairly standard wheels, and two fairly standard motors um, I think they're kind of Palulu motors or Palulu motor clones um, there is a caster and there's some bolts for it um, oh that's just the header for the Pi Zero um, so I've got another set of headers that is a teeny tiny motor board um, so the soldering was just to get this header on which is why I couldn't get it together in a hotel um, and this also requires some teeny tiny, really tiny screws. I don't know if you can see how small they were, so I did not have a screwdriver that size to hand. Um, I mean, I could admit they had, uh, there was only really one screwdriver kit at the fair, um, at the market, which was a uh, £55. Um, uh, I think it was the iFixit kit. And I thought, well, that's a little bit excessive for when I need one screw. Now, uh, I suppose it's a pretty good kit, but I just felt it was a bit unnecessary. And I'd already kind of got a bit nuts buying things but uh yeah this tiny little board um let's see if we can get close enough are you going to focus mm, i might need the microscope there we go there's your motor chip hold on i've still got it the other way around um that's a bit tricky <sighs> Come on. focus is that a DRV? Maybe we'll get that under the micro microscope. But to be honest, I mean, it's a Fortronics board, and you should, you know, we can definitely look this up later and get the part numbers. Okay, uh, it also came with a battery box, a whole bunch of mail to mail cables, some random resistors. Um, wasn't really sure. Uh, it came with a. Uh, I don't see it in here, but a um, one of the oh, oh that must have fallen down here somewhere. Um, uh, it came with a, a sensor, just um, a simple distance sensor. So one of the uh, ultrasonic ping sensors that I've used on other robots. Um, and uh, I've seen it done where someone has taken this box, put holes in it, and stuck the motors out either side. To give you your wheeled robot um, and I was thinking well I could probably throw that together in a hotel so I did start to do so um, so yes obviously running into that problem the other problem I ran into was well I could stick holes for the motors but uh, without either glue or other bolts um, I couldn't really get them to lock so perhaps I could drill something smaller for this hole or try and get some bolts put in those holes otherwise you know it'll start to want to flip up and so on so uh, I do want to perhaps go and try and assemble a robot in the box, because that'd be kind of fun, uh, using a Pi Zero. So that's a definite bit of fun to be had. And that might be what we'll do a bit later. Um, so, there is a bit of soldering to be done tonight. Um, 
So, first thing is, is uh, is there any questions about all the cool stuff? Fat. Oh, yeah, the speaker fat. That's the most awesome fat, but then also, somewhere amongst all the stuff I've just pushed put over here, we've got uh, the, um, the most awesome fat DAC. So, sorry, the fat DAC, if, uh, so I'll go over what that is. Uh, let's get one of these open. So I think it's using the same chipset as a speaker fat, and I think what you've got on the fat DAC is, um, so I2S audio output for your Raspberry Pi 2 P20, 24 bit, 192 kilohertz output. That's kind of sweet, really, isn't it? Um, no, you just wanted to say fat. Well, yeah, but fat DAC, awesome. Um, so you've got a line out, and I think think that stereo have we got enough connectors what uh maybe <laughs> looks like there's enough connectors on there for that so there's your chip again um i'm gonna see if i can get a close-up of that oh let me get focus it's focusing on my fingertips isn't it this is again when I want the uh, microscope. The microscope's not currently plugged in, so um, frequency, bit rate, DAC. Ah, oh, there we go. So that'll be probably what we're talking about here then. This uh, PCM 5102A. Nice. It's interesting. It's made in Sheffield, and then you've got Japanese kanji characters. I wonder what that says, or if it just says made in Sheffield as well. So uh, that's going to be fun. Um, and then uh, what else have we got? Oh, and I've got to solder headers on that as well. Right, okay. So plenty of header soldering. Hurrah! Um, uh, so what about this, uh, the speaker hat? Oh, the drum hat, sorry. We'll have a look into that in this as well. Let's um, pop some of these things out of the way just because it's getting a bit messy over there. Oh, this one has got the uh, headers attached. Okay, so let's have a look. Maybe I should ask the Pimeroni guys um, about why they've got things printed in uh, Japanese on their, their boards. Why specifically Japanese? DRH08, Digital Beat Combobulator. Right, um, this looks like it's going to be a whole bunch of fun. Um, so that'd be kind of cool. Um, see, I mean, it'd be nice if I could do something where, again, this one kind of terminates. So maybe I'd have to have something to connect both. But it'd be nice if I could, say, set that up with your uh, speaker fat. And then you could have a little kind of just simple tinker speaker -a thing. Um, maybe plug this in, plug in. Uh, so there was a, a demonstration at the uh, Pi Party of uh, Sonic, Sonic Pi, which is uh, an interesting little... Uh, it's like a Ruby environment for coding audio effects, and I'm really understating how awesome it was. Uh, perhaps I'll put a link to a, a video where it's demonstrated, and it actually, it, it's, it's hard to describe in a way that really gives you the picture, but seeing it done, uh, awesome. Right, okay, so that one doesn't require soldering. So let's go and just uh, tidy up a little bit the stuff that doesn't need soldering. And the stuff that does, let's put it over here so I can kind of get stuck in on that. Um, I'm going to need that because I've got headers in for one of the pies. Um, I'll just stuff this, these things away. Oh yeah. Sorry, the uh, the Cotswolds uh, Cotswold jam stickers. Get off my land. <laughs> Proper uh, Gloucester accent speak that is. Um, get off my land. <laughs> right. Uh, was there anything in here that required soldering? Um, oh, right. That was another bag of stuff we missed. Okay, so that was a uh, adapter for the um, Raspberry Pi Zero for a camera. Um, there's a Pi camera module. 
Uh, that was the um, the sensor that came with that robot kit. So I'll just stuff that in that box. There's one more thing in here. All oh, right, okay, just a another one of these. Um, and I think I picked up a ruler version of one of these as well. Um, and I don't know what that is. Is that some kind of lens thing? What's that? Is that for the uh, for the camera? I don't know what that is. Okay, slightly confused by what that is. Uh, <laughs> we'll find out when we start trying to put stuff together, I suppose. Right, that also does not require soldering. So next. What about the scroll hat? Scroll fat even? Yeah, that also requires soldering. Let's have a good look inside that because we haven't opened that up yet. And Interesting. It's come with three, three sets of headers. Why is that? That's kind of unusual. I suppose I didn't expect this extra header. Um, maybe you can kind of. You only need one, and you can stagger it along. I don't know. But um, so that's just a grid of LEDs. Very important. Set. Bang goods. Okay. So Paul Martin. I, if you need a very Portable screwdriver set. I've been using Banggood's Dan D A N I U. No, yeah, 25 in 1 multi purpose precision screwdriver wallet set repair tools P94 0063. Um, I'll look that up. <laughs> Although, I suppose, yeah, let me just uh, I do occasionally get bits and bobs from Banggood, so um. Hold on, if I search for that, we can find that. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, some background noise there. Sorry about that. Um, let's see if I can go across to... Um, I'm just trying to go and get that from uh, the uh, Banggood site, and it's just taking a little while to load. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's that's okay. Well, huh? Oh, okay. This thing is that the one over here? So, hey, that's actually pretty cool um, for just a kind of little on-the-go set, isn't it? Okay, I'll hold on to that link for after the show to have a good look and see if I'd like one of them. Um, that's a very nice tip. Thank you very much. Right, so ooh, we want this one over here. Um, so I still don't know why I got both sets. Um, but, uh, let's um, just, so I should have a bunch of hats to solder, a couple of raspberry pies. So there's one, there's the other. I can't remember if there was anything else, but let's do all of those at once. So I'll just turn on the iron. And it's going to get a bit noisier as I turn the fan on. Um, and my iron doesn't heat up that quickly anyway, so... And that's this old thing, well... Maybe we can actually use something, I don't know, a piece of old perf board to compare them. So we can see it. Let's um, have to take that out first. I'll pop that in this tin so it doesn't get uh, destroyed. I, do you know, I haven't really thought about where I'm going to use each of the pies, but I really like the idea of one of them having this right angle header. Um, yeah, as opposed to always having a straight header. Um, 
I don't know why, I don't even really know what I'm going to do with them yet, but uh, obviously there's not much you can do with them without having a header on them to start with. Um, oh well, you know what, I'm going to stick a <laughs> header on because why not? <laughs> it's kind of impulsive, I know. Um, there was an awful lot of impulse buying this weekend, so... But hey, it was impulse buying of goodies that I'm going to use for all kinds of fun stuff. Oops. Oh yes, yeah, screwdriver heads. I do occasionally find that um, I, you know, try and find out where they've all ended up. So I've got a whole bunch of different um, screwdriver sets with pretty much interchangeable heads. Now, most of these hats do expect male headers. So maybe for now, let's not put female headers in. Um, and I'm going to go and take the slightly easier set of already dual in line male headers. Um, and go and solder those up, all those together. Some of all of the bits. Hmm. I'm just going to move some things from underfoot because I have piled up things that didn't need soldering. Oh! Hello! What's it focused on? Has this confused it? The, um, let's cover that and try and make it focus again. There we go. That seems to work fairly often now, is that if it uh, fails to focus, block its shot completely and let it go. And I, uh, Maybe I could give that uh, tip to AVE, because, uh, <laughs> which may, uh, well, yes, but it's one of his trademarks, isn't it? Uh, asking his camera to focus on his own unique and in a fun way um so right okay now i've got some room to maneuver it is i don't know if it's as satisfying as yelling focus you at it but it works so um right is my soldering iron hot enough yet? Yeah, it's hot enough, okay. Um, I guess that's reasonably well aligned. Um, just get one side in and then the other. Oh, it's well aligned for soldering. It wasn't well aligned for the camera, so let's do that. I will give it a run over here, which should mean I don't get dry joints. These. as well. Tapping the screen works on an iPhone. Ah. Um. Okay, let's see if this is hot enough. I was sort of tempted and maybe I should have taken the opportunity to have a go at them. Um, when I didn't have an iron in the hotel, I knew I was back at the uh, pie party the next day, and I was tempted by those hammerheads. Now that tip is just facing the wrong way to actually do what I want to do. So I was tempted by the hammerheads. Just not hot enough yet. Uh, it's just it seems to be hot enough to go into the, uh, the tip tinner. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, look, we've got the tip is nicely tinned, but. Why am I 
getting nowhere. Right, I'm going to be going slightly out of shot just to uh, get to where the uh, work desk is. What is going on there today? Ah, there we are. So just because I've picked a ground pin where there's just a lot of thermal mass and that's why I'm not getting uh, much going on there. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that joint. Okay, let's do one the other side. No, this is not lead free solder. Um, Nedis flux cord solder, which has worked, served me well in many other purposes. So, I don't know. It can't be the solder, it's got to be me. It's just not playing ball today. Well, that one's worked out better. Had I just not given the tip enough time to get to full heat or something, was that? Oh look, now we're getting somewhere. Did I just miss a good opportunity to use my uh, beautiful new solder sucker? Hmm. Okay, let's do it. Mm, okay, we'll come around and do it this side so then we're not going back over ones we've already done. I guess I should go give the uh, hammer her header a try at some point. Um, I mean, what's not li to like about hitting electronics as hard as you can with a hammer, right? very cool demonstration uh, with a chap who'd uh, made a um, kind of a fairground you know the fairground hammer game where you've got to hit the hammer and ring the bell and he made one using a Raspberry Pi um, an airbag and a pressure sensor and a bunch of uh, the uh, W2812 uh, multicolor LED strips so if you hit the uh, hit the airbag hard enough um, then you'd see the LED go right the way up the strip there'd be a bell at the top that would ring and you get you know, flashing uh, LEDs at the top as well um, and I think some of the children who managed to get the bell to ring were given the uh, sweets as well um, there was plenty of cake as well so uh, children were fairly well sugared 
Um, right, uh, hold on. Don't like the look of that joint. There we go, that looks reasonable. I might come back and clean some of the residue off of that later. Um, I need to do that for a whole bunch of my other boards, don't I? Come back and clean the residue off them. Hmm. Ooh. Let's try not to. Mount the. Uh... Now, one thing I'm noticing here, and I'll see if the camera can uh, focus on this, is that this zero. Well, let's uh, just get it to focus on that. I don't know if you can see that corner of the board there, but there's an awful lot of the uh, fiberglass from the board from some slightly iffy routing hanging out, so I might go back around that with something to, to clean that up, but uh, I'm thinking that would embed itself rather well into my fingers, my children's fingers, or my fingers indeed. Um, is that where it's been um, feed grooved or something to get it out? Is that what's happened there? Oh, I didn't go over this one with the flux pen. Oh well, we get to compare and contrast if it made a bit of difference. I don't think it did here, to be honest, but there we are. I think actually just simply having the iron a little bit hotter, or having had a bit more time to heat up, um, has perhaps done the better job. This is only a, um, this is only a, a relatively cheap Maplin adjustable temperature iron. It's not exactly the best iron, is it? But it performs. So for that robot, um, the uh, the one that's made in the cardboard box it came in, um, I saw someone who'd made one just using a hot glue gun um, and hot glued the motors, hot glued in the um, the uh, uh, battery box. They use a controller of their own choosing. They didn't go with the controller that was in the box though. Okay. Now I get, so I don't know if you can see, there's a solder bridge there. Let's try out my fabulous new tool. Um, where did I put it? Let's get this open. Let's try and see what happens with it, see if it'll... Oh look! There we go, hold on. Um, oh, your T12 iron. Completely assembled unit for the power supply for $40, $40 thermal capacity is very good. So, Paul Martin was recommending uh, the T12 iron, and perhaps I'll stick a link in below, but I believe uh, he's made a video where he assembles one of those. Um, although I think you can get an assembled kit. Um, it, it's probably way cheaper if you assemble your own as well. So this has got push down, spring-loaded plunger until it locks. Iron tip on the joint, oh sorry, yep, yeah, to melt the solder. Solder's melted, apply the silicone nozzle to the solder closely. Press a nozzle on the solder pad to increase suction power. Ooh. Um, make sure you hold the body steadily when the plunger recoils. Hmm. And keep face and obstruction away from the plunger for safety. Push it down to exhaust the solder. So it works the same as my old one, but uh, the old one didn't seem to come with instructions like that, and they are quite beautifully illustrated, actually. Um, and multilingual. Um, yes, it's Japanese again. Hmm. Okay, let's just see how it feels. Oh, oh, that's a bit. I 
So Paul Martin, just with regards to that T12 iron, says he'd recommend the pre-assembled units because the price isn't that much higher by the time you buy the case and power supply. <laughs> so let's have a look at the... Oh, oh, okay. Let's try that out. So we'll go and heat this up. And it's interesting, the button's up here. Yeah, I suppose it is on the other one. Okay, let's heat that up. Uh, that wasn't very good, was it? Um, that was me. But not. We got to get right onto there. Hmm. There we go. It did get something because it's ejecting something. <laughs> Except it's kind of wedged in that case. There we go. But look, it did the did the job. Okay. Well. Perhaps we can try later and find out how how well the other one did the job. It is kind of satisfying, isn't it? You can certainly take an eye out with it. <laughs> um, oh, it's it's also a lot stiffer because the other one. I mean, you kind of compare the two. You can kind of really feel, A, there's a lot less springiness here. This one feels kind of rickety, but also um, you can almost hear the, the suction on this. Ooh. Whereas this one you can kind of, or you can, yeah. And this one has got some O-rings and seals in it, but I get the feeling this one is a much, well, much better seal. See, now they're going really easily. He says as one doesn't go. Okay, there's two pi zeros, ready to go. Um, let's go and put the uh, header on the fat back. Primaroni definitely have a way with words, don't they? They name some awesome things. I, I don't know if you've, uh, if any of the people watching have seen their uh, their videos with their uh, their build tank. Um, they are quite a fun bunch in person as well, I believe. Um, and, um, Yeah, uh, their build tank is uh, noisy, crazy, raspberry pi fun. Um, obviously they're, they're showing the products and the new cool things they've got on their website, but uh, they're having fun doing it. It's very, they demonstrate everything that's going to be on their site. Yeah. Now, I presume it is this way up. I mean, I don't know. That's the way I'd have it, but... I didn't really go and check, so... Try not to knock any of those tiny little surface mount devices off. Oops.
Hmm. Getting a fair pace going on this one, I think. I wonder if they're eventually going to start shipping these with uh, hammerhead as if it's... Um, I get why, because through-hole requires a completely different assembly process from um, surface mount, so that's why all the through-hole bits are shipped separately. It's a massive cost saving to have have them in separate processes. Uh, sorry, to have them not done, I suppose, is to have you, you know, the user do them. Um, Although I wanted to play with my uh, my new solder sucker, most of the time, just heating up the bridge again makes it work, because solder tends to want to shrink around the pad. Right, that's another thing done. Okay, and again, I don't really know why the scroll fat had this one single in line header on it. That's should we go find out? Let's go find out. Hold on, let me um before I leap and go and solder it all up, because I'm not gonna be able to desolder one of these headers for any time anytime soon. So Pi Maroni and we'll go and look at the uh, scroll fat. So hold on, let me just do that. Um, Location of pirate treasure, scroll fat. Um, I don't know, this is the scroll fat, not the scroll fat HD. Bazinga. Okay, so it's the <laughs> that chip there, the IS31FL3730 matrix LED driver chip. Female header requires soldering. It doesn't show that extra male header, oh, okay. I suppose, um, I think I've just gotten a bonus, okay. A bonus that had me confused for a minute, okay. That's fine by me. Doesn't appear to be part of the normal thing. Wonder how hard SMD headers would be. Um, I, I've seen SMD headers, I know you can buy them. I'm just wondering about getting them aligned um, and getting them straight, but uh, yeah. I don't see why not, I suppose. Okay, well that's obviously got to be this way up. Um, and yet again, slightly close quarters. Let's uh, go over this properly again, like I did the last one. Generally it's just the pads that would be... Okay. It went in first time last time, and then it took a bit of jiggering this time. Technical term that, eh? Jiggering. Probably more expensive, but should be doable in a reflow process. Well, I was looking into this uh, surface mount so you could do maybe a, a, a single layer board or just a one process. So I, I, I wonder how much they, uh, yeah, there. I suppose compared to these, that'd be interesting. That'd be an interesting investigation to look at the cost of effectiveness of the different header types. Okay, that's one. Could be straighter. There we go, straight. Good. Hmm. background noise there. Oh, come on. Hmm, it definitely took some off there, definitely took quite a lot off there. But uh, it's not exhausting them too well. I guess I'm just going to wait for it to solidify a bit more and then try it. Be there. Hmm. 
<laughs> Getting myself tied up in knots. was working better when I was coming in from the other side, wasn't it? Yeah. Apart from there's... Apart from the slidiness of this table. I should try and find some kind of both heat proof and rubberized um, cover to stick onto this. Um, it's actually all part of the same copy table. It's uh, both serving as standing up my uh, work camera and um, and I don't really mind getting burn marks on it to be honest because it's only really for this for filming. Uh, Hmm. Oh, there were some uh, some among the very cool robots I saw at the uh, Pi Party event. Um, there was a robot that was playing Connect Four, um, and it had a, an arm that would actually go and drop the Connect Four pieces in. There was uh, an amazing chess playing robot, uh, so it was a Raspberry Pi based of course, because well, they all were um, You, uh, it had a slider and it, it wasn't playing by itself, you know, you gave it the moves of both players and you had to kind of type in the, um, uh, the the moves as in, you know, number letter but, but when you did so um, runners and magnets would then kick in uh, with some stepper motors underneath and then uh, move the magnets over and then pop them up physically move the piece across and so uh, I think the best way it was described by the person who made it is that uh, any piece that was taken was taken by a magnet to do the uh, tour of Shane to get off the board um, so that was kind of fun uh, there were some robot playing robot, uh, sorry, some robot playing, some football playing, soccer playing robots, um, where you uh, you drove them up. Uh, they, so some had automatic capture, some you had to press a button, they'd capture the ball and they'd fire it off somewhere and they were all remote control. Um, and they were using a combination of Raspberry Pi and the, uh, the Atmel 328, the Arduino style chip. The 328 was being used, I think, to do power control so basically when you told the thing you wanted to turn off it would signal the Pi, wait for the Pi to shut down then turn off the power so it would make sure the Pi actually got properly shut down because they were getting too much SD corruption from just depowering a Pi with the file system running um, there are obviously disadvantages to having uh, a full on Linux operating system running on a, um, on a device like that right, okay, let's do the Speaker fat. Okay, this kind of looks awesome. So, I guess we put the headers on first because I suppose, yeah, and then we bolt in the uh, speaker. So, you know, there's this feeling that whatever I do, my soldering is going to be is going to ugly up this beautiful board. <laughs> I'm just hoping. Oh, there we are. That's all right. Again. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can I come in that side? Is that going to work? See, when I come and use some isopropyl alcohol to clean this up a bit, I'm hoping it doesn't touch any of the uh, silk screen or solder mask on the. Um, I mean, oh.
So I think in terms of goodies I bought at the pie party, I think I spent somewhere in the region of 225 British pounds on um, on robot goodies. I mean, I had a face like a kid in a candy shop, just wow, loads of electronic stuff right here. Um, and uh, I was thinking that perhaps my either my wife or my daughter might help me exercise some self-control um, which I managed to anyway but uh, they ran off to get food and they said oh are you coming for food now and it was like no I have just discovered this market I can eat in a short time and I caught up with them but uh, it was yeah I mean <laughs> it was awesome seeing all these places that are normally uh, online stores only I suppose being able to see all of the, the various kits and goodies they had. Um, so let's just finish that up. stubbornly slipping off. I don't like the look of this one. I'll just give it a bit more solder. There we are. And were there any more others? Um, oh, there was just uh, bolting that together, the speaker fat. Okay. So that is all the soldering done tonight. Off the iron. I'll leave the uh, extractor running a bit longer. So, how this? Hold on then. Huh. I'm presuming that needs some tiny little cables soldered across from here to here, right? Well, I'll bolt it together and I'll um, I'll work that out because I suspect those are going to be easier when the speaker's attached. Okay, let's uh, turn that on and oh, <laughs> did I lose any? I don't think I did. Now I've got and plenty of extra bolts. Okay, so I presume the the way you're gonna the way this has got to be done is you push it through one bolt and then you sit the speaker on the other. And these are little nylon thing and bolts. They don't feel they're not metallic in the slightest. that hmm. this is also quite nicely finished I mean there's a couple of like rooting pull-off marks but it's not um, certainly no rough edges so what does this say beeps no bees 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 wub 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 I can't tish something tish um, badger, 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 mushroom, mushroom, pa, pa, brap, ba, ba, ba. That's what's written on there. That <laughs> great fun. Why not? Okay. Oh, that is fiddly because they're kind of just they were just slipping off thread. Probably if you've done enough things with little tiny screws, you know they get slightly off thread and jam up and then you've got to back them all the way out and put them on again. And... Did I lose two tiny... There's one more there. 
two, three. Oh no, I have just the right number. Okay. There's one still sat in the bag there. Kind of making it up by sort of thinking that there should be these between the speaker and the rest of the board. So, stop me if I'm doing it wrong. Drop um, that on the right way round. Oh! <laughs> Let's uh, try that again. Now, I suppose my question really then is what kind of wire should I be using to attach this? Is that 30 AWG stuff that I was using and I've got plenty of just a bit too poxy for this? Do I need something thicker? Um, I mean, I've got full-on great big speaker wires but they're going to be a monstrosity in this particular context so here's why I was thinking of the tiny stuff wait a minute is that what's that Is that like a length of wire to use to make the contact? Is that okay? Let's go back over to um, so let's go to speaker fat where I'm expecting the uh, bill of materials. Oh, fat beat as well. Hmm. Um, kit includes mylar, bare wire. 24 AWG, okay, that is it, that's for connecting that up, okay, got you. Black, eight black nylon bolts, okay. So. That's on relatively firmly. Um, oh look. <laughs> They have an assembly guide. Yeah, I did do that right. Okay, they actually did all the bolting before they did the soldering. Um, whereas I did the soldering the header first. That's okay. Right, now. There's a question. Where are my cutters? Did I put them... Ooh, did I put my cutters where I can reach them? Everything else is where I can reach it, but... I can't see my cutters. Um, ah. Cutters, right. Uh, let's go to this one. And we need these to bend stuff in place as well. do is 
going to do it. What does it look like over there? Yeah, they put dollops of solder on that. Okay, well, let's um, be a little bit interesting. Hmm. Okay, my thinking is to put some solder in here. Drop the wire on, and then uh, there's probably going to be lead-free solder already on that. Um, my thinking is. Right, okay, so, <laughs> where are we going to, oh, let's not use the cutters as pliers, let's use the actual pliers as pliers, although perhaps for this job, tweezers might be a better fit, let's see, I'm going to try and get some solder on that outer track there as well. I don't quite understand why there's an inner and outer there. There we go. Oh. How am I going to do that? Am I going? That. If I could. Right, okay, that's on. That is a fairly, uh, fairly fiddly process, that one. Um, let's just get myself a little bit more in shot when I'm doing this, although I suppose it's not. Right, I'm going to use the pliers to kind of poke that down into... Oh, that's awful. Okay. Um, ah, oh no, <laughs> surface tension and the iron pulled it way back out. Ha, oh, who'd have thought it? So, surface tension on the uh, yes, it's frustrating as well. Right, okay, well, we've got a much tinier amount of wire than I initially thought I'd need. Take the straight on so I don't actually have to straighten it out before going. Um, about that much? Okay, well, let's use the technique we just learned. So we give ourselves a bit of a gap here, kind of like a plunge depth mark on a. Put downward pressure on, putting pressure on. Shouldn't we? Okay, 
thing. Let that dry off. slightly here before I try and put that there. Rather crudely, I am just going to put a blob of solder. Sorry about that, just knocked the camera. Oops. Yeah, that's stable again. Put a crude blob of solder here just to kind of. Yeah, that should do it. I don't like that, that still looks kind of dry, and I'm thinking this is because we've got a mix of solder types up here. I'd be imagining that's what we've ended up with. Okay, that'll do. Okay, well, that's the soldering done for now. Um, so, we now have ready for use in uh, subsequent fun and projects. Speaker fat, uh, some spare wire that I'll stick in with the other wires, I suppose. Um, speaker fat, hopefully ready to go. I think we're going to need to do software to make that work at some point. Our scroll fat. So the fat, I believe, is just the term for Raspberry Pi Zero fitting boards. That's some. I don't know who came up with the term. I don't know if it's Pimeroni's own bit of fun or if there's a thing for it. The fat DAC, which kind of looks like it's the right way up, but I can't quite tell. Um, okay, and two pies, one with uh, straight headers and one with right angle headers. Um, probably I'm going to give Helena the straight header pie, because that's going to be easiest for her to do stuff with, and I'll keep the right angle header ones for myself to do stuff with. Uh, to Hmm. Well, I've also got a straight zero with uh, straight headers on it up here somewhere. Uh, which we had out the other day. I think I was soldering it on my uh, one of my other videos. Okay, well, I've got a bunch of those, so... Let's look at this robot kit. So, soldering iron is off. And we'll put these boards... I guess they can go back in their bags, right? Um, does it still fit nicely? <laughs> yeah. There we are. Just makes them a bit easier to pick up. I've got a uh, sort of... So there is a box here, um, which is nearly all just microcontrollers, so that's where kind of Pi's, uh, Arduinos and other random microcontrollers go. Um, that one's for sensors down there, so I don't know, maybe one of these I can put kind of hats in or maybe I'll just put it in the same box with the microcontrollers. Um, I've also got a box, a whole box of motor controllers, um, although they're all kind of the, um, uh, the L298 board types, which are looking, I mean, compared with some of the things, you know, we've got now, they're looking quite bulky. Um, <laughs> And considering some of these can be driven by ITC and by only a couple of pins, you know, it does seem a little bit like they're not as useful as they perhaps once were. Okay. Um, I'll put that in one of my component boxes. So, it can go in here for later. put it in with all of this stuff and my level shifters that I had made up the other day. Um, hmm. For the robot we're about to make, the straight headers seem more useful. Oh uh, well, okay. Um, 
I can always buy another Pi Zero W. Um, they're now all of a sudden not so hard to find. They were uh, all sold out the first time I wanted to get some. Right, so in the box for this robot, I'd already started marking out and making holes. And the first thing is really this is on the wrong side of the box, it only leaves this much depth to do stuff and I reckon I could do it in this side instead. So let's uh, look at the marking at holes, I suppose, okay. We'll put those aside for later. We can turn off the fan for now. Um, I think there's gonna be no more soldering, but maybe what I'll do temporarily, or at least because it's supposed to be a kind of hack together job, um, is do it with hot glue. Um, I said someone else had kind of done it with hot glue, so it's perhaps not original, but it will work beautifully. Um, Oh, hold on, we've got more. Hold on a minute, there's more than just a uh, distance sensor. That's a distance sensor. What's... Ooh. Ah, so that's a light sensor, and that looks like that's a line sensor, so you could probably put it mounting on the bottom of the robot and have it pick up where it's on, on a line or not. So this one, when built, I think is going to be great fun for the kids. So I'm going to want to perhaps bolt that or hot glue that on the bottom. Um, it should have enough clearance with the wheels and the uh, caster. Um, I mean, you know, if I take the whole size of that and the caster, is that magnetic? Vaguely feels like it might be. Um, so depth-wise, yeah, there's plenty. Okay, cool. Right, well, we'll put those on the bottom of the bot. Um, and. Uh, Female to male, male to female. Okay, there was actually a selection of different. Um, they're not all male to male. Ah. So I guess we'll make a trial layout first. Um, So these are all the parts. And I'm wondering if these resistors are because some of those sensors need a uh, voltage divider or something or other on them. Um, what we got? We got 3300. So, oh, 330 ohms. That'd be LEDs, right? You wouldn't want. And we've got. Can't quite make that out. Four seven. Four seventy ohms. Four seventy ohms and three thirty ohms. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, think about what we can do with those. Right. I suppose there might be. Thinking of it. Um, go to. Mm, the Pi Hut and have a look at the Cam Jam kit. Maybe they'll suggest what they've been doing with it. So uh, let's just, I need to put these on hotkeys, right? That one. Uh, <laughs> and it's going to be the Raspberry Pi store. Um, there's a lot sold out probably because they were keeping stock to go to uh, the um, the pie party uh, do they have a search bar up here they do um, and cam jam educate 3 robotics that's the one so does it resistant jumper kits with which to complete your circuits Two custom red wheels, which go extra fast because they're red. Ball caster for the third wheel. Small breadboard. Strong 3M padded double-sided tape. Was there? I... If that was there, it may have been something I've, I've not kept or didn't spot. Oh, well, I've got some of that around anyway. Uh, battery box, which we have. And I've actually already got it batteried up. Um, oh, and this battery box... 
definitely for the win because it's got an on off switch on it awesome <laughs> um yes uh ultrasonic distance sensor line follower strong cardboard box to keep it all in or cut to make your thing um thingy first for the 3d printer oh that might be a thing to do that's not gonna be a thing to do in a short time tonight or like uh hold on now uh, if i move myself like that one so someone else has already done that um yeah that was what i was thinking uh, so done unboxing oh they've done plenty with those okay so it's been done before but i'm still gonna have fun doing it and uh, maybe i will try and 3d print it and then reassemble it in the 3d printed version later um oh that's horrible you've got me within me within me let's go back to this okay so let's have a look at this thing of me um and okay well i'm going to assume i hope i'm right that that five volts there square pin aligns with the five volt square pin on the pi okay that would work not too badly on the uh, the right angled pi i suppose um we've got uh screw headers there for ground v in Motor A, motor B, okay. And there's a few pins broken out across the top. We could then, I suppose if it's mounted like that, we could just sticky mount it over here. But then, if I do that, I can't actually get to uh, my um, other bits there, so I don't know. Mm. Yeah, okay. Well, just like that. Because then it's facing where... The well, these aren't, are they? They aren't facing where the motors are going to be. The motors are going to be at the back. Hmm. So you know, the motor cables trading over the top of these. Okay, well, we'll figure that out when we get to it. Um, so... I guess robots... Just add sharks and lasers. Awesome. Um... So we're going to want, what, the word robots at the front? Maybe just because I've seen that anyway. Uh, so those would fit in like that. So I'd cut holes for the wheels in. Um, I'd probably... We're going to need to be able to change the batteries. So where does the, um, where does the case come out for the batteries? Okay, there. Let's not hot glue the battery box in then, so I'll just hot glue the motors in, drop the battery box on top. Um, I could always sticky pad the uh, uh, the Pi to the batteries, and then uh, run everything into the top there. Um, and that also then means I could uh, detach just enough to be able to go program it. Um, I'm going to program it using that new, rather nice new OTG technique. That'll be fun. Um, not going to need these quite until I get to doing stuff with those sensors, so we'll add those later. Um, before we stick any of that on, we're also going to need holes for this somewhere down here, right? Um, does that pop out? Must do. Uh, Screwdriver for leverage. Use one of these uh, rather nasty old, uh, these are really awful old jewelers, but they still, yeah, they kind of work, but they're not great. Yeah. yeah, there we are. Okay, so that does pop out, so I can then get access to those. Right, all right. Um, do I have a measuring device to hand? Um, that got markings on it. Hold on, I've just got to find something with which to measure. Where are all my measuring items? I did buy a, uh, a Pi Hut ruler with GPIO things on it, but uh, it wasn't in my bags. I'm wondering if somebody has decided that's a very... Uh, I don't know. 
and there it's gone. Uh, ah, well this will do. It's a little bit excessive for this particular purpose, but it'll get us moving. And uh, yeah, there we are. Okay. Um, oh, and we need a pencil. Do I have, in fact, um, right, well, this will do. Okay, so I use the inside of the box up here to mark stuff down. It's not going to be, I don't think it has to be horribly precise. So, what we're saying that's roughly 90. Okay. by 160 so um, and we'll then want so 45 for the middle um, these uh, again this is going to be a rough measurement but if I'm trying to get from the center of that axle out to here are we saying 52 here I think that's about 52 so again I mean this is going to be hot glue so 50 52 50 might be close enough um, but we'll try to get it close, closer than just, you know, we'll try and get it so it's going to stay fairly firmly. And if that's the case, so that's... Is that 11 or 12? Um, take it tangent to that circle that's about 11 so let's just say Okay, so finally got this, which is slightly hard to see. Oh, let's put that in there so that ball does not run away and get lost forever. Um, <laughs> and uh, so the diameter of this, well, it's not so much the diameter of this, is it? It's the distance between these two. Um, and I could get out my calipers, but I think I'm going to call that 15 millimeters. So again, if I draw a rough circle, I could put those there and saying 15 millimeters. So we're saying the center is 45, that's roughly 15. I'm not going to be able to really measure out half millimeters, not, not with this. So okay, we'll go with I mean, how far off is 16? Hmm. Quite a bit off. Um, but then how far off is this from being, say, 91 or 92? Uh, it could be 92. Hold on. This is where, again, really, for this kind of measurement, rounded corners and parallax are not going to help on that kind of measurement. Um, but I could roughly say... If it 
it was 92. Well, it doesn't matter because it's still 7.5 either way. So I could go 8 one way and 7 the other and have it ever so slightly off. It's, I'm not particularly happy about it, but I don't think uh, I'm going to be able to get the drilling precision um, or the hole precision, precision <laughs> to do that. So we'll kind of say... Okay, 45, mm, take away 7, and minus 8, we've got uh, 38, and uh, yeah, 38 and 37, right? <laughs> Can't believe I stopped there. <laughs> uh, so 38, 37, and if this is 160, I'm going to want it near the front and roughly 40 or maybe a bit maybe a bit closer then we'll go with 30 from the front so okay hmm oh it's focusing on this lovely box instead of the pie it's not very nice is it Put the pie in there. That's no, still. Come on. Yeah, it did a colour thing there. That was kind of weird. I suppose I'd kind of. Yeah, I suppose it was a completely white box. Right, okay, so. Let's measure out and uh, mark this. Um, I'm not going to be able to do this uh, in the, under the camera and get this right, I think. I'm just Take this into my hand over here, and so we say we said thirty, and uh, I'll tell you what. I'll try and uh, have some some accuracy here uh, because I do have. you hand somewhere here I have a set square haha -ha. right um, so we can go with marking this 30 line and um, now where did I just put the big ruler? I put it just under my copy desk where I really couldn't see it hurrah <laughs> um, so if I go right out to the edge mark that center line and I can work from there um, Again, this is rough as guts, but it'll do the job. Rough as guts. I'm sure everyone who, I'm sure some people who are watching know exactly where I get that phrasing from. <laughs> I've uh, I've watched uh, EV blog for many years, so I'm sure there are times when I've just picked up his uh, some of his mannerisms. Um, you know, not sure you can watch somebody that many years out picking out a few. Oh, I'm slightly off again, but not enough that it matters. And that will do. Um, it's reasonable. Um, this one is a bit closer too, so if I mark off... Oh, what do you reckon? I could get... That's seven and a half there. And that's seven and a half there. We've now got, while well, I throw and assault the table with my set square, okay, so we've marked out where that's going to go. Um, now, I don't know how these other chaps did it or if they just hot glued this on as well, but uh, I am wondering if I can drill out cardboard. Let's just see if that's going to work. I'm slightly winging this because I have not 
uh, anticipated enough to uh, have charged up my drilling equipment. Um, in fact, I've not anticipated enough to put it somewhere accessible. So it's Okay, here we are. Has anyone here tried drilling cardboard? Is that, am I, am I, should I expect that even to work? Am I about to make a horrible mess? Now the other question is, is, so the drill bit I've got is kind of a bit too big for those. Do I have any finer? I do, I have some finer bits. They're not really drilling bits though. I have some finer bits around the uh, the mill, the CNC mill that I could use. Um, CNCing out the cardboard is excessive, and it would not be something I could do just tonight. I'd have to have a bit more preparation and uh, hand work, but we would get a very fine job. Okay, I haven't. Oh, what about the Dremel? Ah, aha. Yes, that sounds a bit better, because I was about to use this brute. <laughs> let's, let's rethink this somewhat and see if I can do it with the Dremel, because it really is a bit brute force to do this guy. Okay. Has this got any charge in it? It has. Cool. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Have I got a bit to make a fine hole with? They're all fairly. No, that's no better. I mean, that's that's basically actually a fluted mill, not a drill. So that would make a piece so hard, large that this would just fly straight through. And there's nothing finer in the Dremel kit, or indeed in the uh, the kit from my CNC, which just happened to have exactly the same collet size. Um, that's an etching bit. I mean, that would make a hole in cardboard. <laughs> okay, this is all slightly evil now, but... <laughs> uh, and I could always 3D print it if this really isn't going to work, but hey, you know. I said this was a robot that I would be winging, so this one you've got to press the button to lock the collet, haven't you? That button, that's it, and then tighten in the uh, the bit, and then now I've got this etching bit. Is there anything slightly, is there anything slightly less brutal than that's going to be? Those are yet more etching bits. Um, I've never used an etching bit to etch. Uh, that's some other kind of etching bit. I don't really, yeah. Okay, don't really see that helping here. Okay, this is all slightly mad science, but hey. Let's, uh... two holes there, maybe I just want to ream them slightly from the other side. Oh, it's quite hard to get in camera shot. Alright, so we've got two holes. 
see if we've got this just right. Yet more fine screws. Not nylon this time. Now, what are my chances of finishing this in the next uh, 15 minutes? I said two hours. Um, limited, but not impossible. Uh, now, I'm suspecting that I need these to come up through. Oh, that's so fiddly. <laughs> So it'd be easier to get them going down this way, but if that's there, will that interfere with the ball? Well, it would if it was close enough, so yeah, we can't do that. So I think I do need to drop them in here, and then um, do they go through this? Because that was the other important thing. Not quite, it needs a bit more. go through. That one needs a bit more, but yeah, there you go. So what I could then do, if I've got a teeny enough Okay, that's one. The other kind of almost lines up. Um, get it over the hole. There we are. Let's do the same same trick. You have to line up if it's actually on the driver. Okay. There we are, and we'll get this one side. Okay, this is about this is pretty awkward. I'm afraid it's going to be all knuckles. Okay, but we are definitely a step closer there. very minor step but still the other side yay we have a ball caster that's attached fairly firmly I mean I could tighten those down more but obviously it's cardboard so it's going to be fairly flexible okay so so let's mark where I'm going to put holes in the sides. And I suppose that partially needs to be marked out on the inside. Um, that starts at what looks like a zero mark. So let's do what I'll do, I suppose, is if I come across here, mark the 52 there. Let's just see if it still looks like 52. You know, I'm tempted to go with 53 or 54 and give it, uh, let's go with 55, give it, doesn't have to be flush with the back there. Um, it's a shame we can't make, oh we could make those further back, it's just then the cables are all going the wrong way. Do we want that further back? Yeah, because otherwise the wheels are half out here and I'd rather they were further back. You know. Yes, let's do that. Let's make, let's get rid of that mark. Let's make about 30. 
the side here, hoping these are roughly... <laughs> and uh, now that the caster's on, the caster is sliding around. Um, I wonder I could probably take the ball out until I'm done and pop it in when I'm done. Just so it doesn't slide around on that. Okay. Right. So, can't quite put this way. You could see it where I'm, when I, while I'm doing it, but I am just taking that 30 mark and taking it down to the bottom. And then I need to get it about 52, 11. So, right there. Now, I want to put that on this side, don't I? I want to put that on the outside because because that's where my Dremel's going to be going. If I take the cardboard thickness as being about two, three millimeters. Give it a bit more to hold on to. So 3 and 11 will go with about 14 millimetres from... Hmm. Okay, there's a little bit of tape on that which I can't draw on. Ah, oh, it's going to take the print of it, is it? Oh. Okay, that's good enough. That'll do. Um, I went with 14, right? So if I go with 14 on this side as well. <laughs> Sticking to the residue from the tape. Okay, uh, 14 is about here. Ooh. Okay, right, now what was the distance between these bits? Because I'm going to want to do another hole for this bit here, this little nub, whatever it is, uh, whatever you want to call it, stud, thinking in Lego terms. I'm going to call that, no, okay, let's try and call it this way. That's kind of fitting around 7.5 millimeters from there, but hold on, I'm going, I need to go from the center of the hole to that, don't I? So, I'll try and keep that horizontal to there. Me or is that basically 10 millimeters? So maybe if I go with 10 millimeters in from that on the same axis, we can drop that on there. That tape residue is definitely causing a few headaches here. Okay, go start making holes in cardboard then. I suppose I want this to be a slightly bigger hole. So we can start with one of these and then maybe go up to uh, something a bit bigger. Um, maybe go up to one of those to, to read that out further. 
We'll start off with this to actually make the hole. Pulling too much current, or is it nearly dead? Oh, we have a red battery light. <laughs> okay, well, that's all right because I can still kind of get somewhere here. I can probably ream those out with a knife if I have to. Let's see, it might have just been that um, using that tool in that way is just pulling too much current. Um, just unbolt that tool, detector back on. Now I suppose the thing is if I was milling out anything slightly more nasty than cardboard I should really be wearing uh, my eye protectors, so my goggles. Um, so I am being a little bit cavalier here, more than I think I normally am. <laughs> Right, let's see if it's really dead is dead or if it was just that there was an overcurrent because of what was going on with the uh, other thing on it. hope for this finishing the job it's obviously protesting <laughs> okay right well I think that's all we're gonna get from that uh, <laughs> ah, dear to have your tools all charged ready for one of these hey well, I suppose I didn't really, I'm winging it, I didn't know I was going to use my Dremel tonight, so. Um, but I will, after the video, go and charge this up for later. Okay, and uh, let me see, what else could I ream those out with? Um, I mean, they're definitely not big enough yet, so gonna be really crude again and just pliers maybe gonna mangle that cardboard I suppose um, these are not my favorite pliers they're old pliers they've been through hell anyway so I wouldn't do this to tools that were my absolute favorite the problem is I'm putting a lot of pressure on the cardboard doing that it's beginning to warp um, is this a job for the bigger dry screwdriver if that's actually got any charge in it I also don't know if that one's got charge in it. And we've got, yeah, and if you look inside, one side's come through, the other side hasn't really come through at all. Um, hmm. Do I have hand tools? do this. I'm not sure I have hand tools capable of milling. Um, it wasn't something I thought I'd find myself doing uh, <laughs> with a device to do it. Uh, that's just... Oh, come on, that's never going to work. Okay. Um, hmm. Just having a rummage. Ah! Now 
these got one that's just perfectly round yeah, that'll do the job I mean I guess the dribble is more fun but Yeah, that's doing the job quite nicely, actually. So I guess what I'm finding out here is this really isn't something you can throw together in a hotel room just because making these holes. Uh, what I tried to do, and it was slightly lame, was I uh, bought a, uh, a cheap, very cheap sewing kit from the local uh, supermarket um, and tried to use the scissors, but the scissors were incredibly blunt. That was how I made the holes in here with uh, just a pair of scissors. I mean, it did the trick, but it wasn't gonna wasn't wasn't gonna hold. Oh. Right now, I need to go back the other side. I'm not sure I can get that in shot while I do it. Um, let's do these ones first. That one we've just got to push it right the way through. We are still just reaming a hole we've already made, so we're already through. We're just... Oh, sorry about that. Knocking that camera. This is an incredibly inefficient way to do it, but until the uh, Dremel is charged. Have. And eventually I'm going to need to make uh, holes for the cables, but I'm not going to try and do that now. If I can get the uh, parts together and then... I mean, I'm at two hours and three minutes. <laughs> so it may be a subsequent video where I uh, put some code on and make this move and finish this off. Um, I was kind of hoping on a relatively quick and easy hack, but uh, I guess I was being overly optimistic. And look, the um, tape residue is just capturing all of the uh, cardboard shavings there. Um, yeah, these holes are still not really big enough, these ones. So let's get that. This one. Sharks with <clears throat> freaking laser beams, I suppose. Hmm. <laughs> Just add lasers. Isn't that awesome? Oops. Okay, I keep digging that. Um, I can perhaps take it a little further up. So I've got some more room to work. <laughs> Oop, I've almost all gone all the way through the other side, but actually if I can do that, maybe I can take some of the uh, messiness off of there. Because, to be fair, I should be able to turn that like an axle in there and it shouldn't really interfere. Not so much for the uh, little ones, for the nubs. Oh. 
Well, okay, that's something. So, hmm. oh, it's still not quite big enough. Okay, I'm sure I have a slightly fatter file than that. There we are. Oh. One of these should do the trick. Okay, that one is squared off. That one is edge, edge as well. Um, so we'll get that in there. And that's cutting as well as reaming there. So it's kind of what we want. Oh, what a mess. Cardboard as a medium. Hmm. All right, that's got to be. It's, it's big enough, but it's kind of. side, get this one to clean it up. Okay. Okay, that's kind of looking good, but... The nub is in the right place, but the nub doesn't quite sit flush because there's not quite enough hole for it. Let's, um, And then perhaps, if I can find it buried among all of this stuff, uh, the craft knife just to um, slice off what's at the back here, can I? Okay, so now we should be able to get that closer to sitting flush. So my problem here is there isn't quite enough axle to get the wheel onto, I think. And that's because it's kind of riding on all of that uh, mashed cardboard we've got out there. And yeah, that, that won't go in there, so...
up my mess and I need to come over and clean this up. Um, this file can file off. Oh, yeah, that does. So, again, I can't quite get this. Just trying to work out how to get this where the camera can see what I'm doing. Um, this is actually effectively filing off the uh, the rough edges there. So I'm going to get closer to a. Side, the same treatment. Broken the uh, cardboard below or the paper covering on the cardboard below, so that's a bit of a frustrating, but I don't think it'll matter. What matters here should is that I should be able to get quite flush with this motor and get enough axle through. Ah, that's far better. And if I go around the outside doing the same there, okay, I'll be vacuuming that up later. <laughs> then it makes much more of a mess. Hmm, okay, that was not quite what I expected. It worked so well on the inside. I should so watch the uh, the other video where someone that I found on that website where other people have made these because I bet you I'm making a right uh, <laughs> yeah I'm sure there's an easier way that I've missed to do this or perhaps they were just using this uh, single wall top layer to do it I don't know ah oh, well unless that will Maybe they have taken out the uh, internal wall, but then how do they get the top to fit on well? Okay. Uh, so, is there enough axle for a wheel to go on to yet? Nope, because the nub needs still more.
I mean, there is a side that doesn't have the nub, but it's the same side that the uh, the leads are tied to. Yeah, not sure about that. I don't want to be... Oh, and as well as the nub, I've just noticed that this bulge is here. What's that bulge? Hmm. Okay, so how have they gotten it? So this came through, because if you look at the wheels, the axles, you can get it to focus on that. Before the actual axle grip comes in, there are a couple of millimetres there, and if I've only got a couple of millimetres here, there's nothing to spare on actually having the axle, the wheel grab the axle. So that's my issue with that. So, I mean, the wheel is on, but it's just going to pop straight off. And there's one axle side longer than the other. No, they are basically the same. Hmm. So, my question is, is have they pulled out this insert? Have they perhaps made a cutout here, not just a couple of holes for the studs? And if I just push that through as hard as I can while attaching the wheel, give myself about three millimeters or so to work with with that. There we go, we've got a wheel attached to a motor. It's not popping off, okay, no, there we go, we have it. All right, so we have one motor on. So, looking like this might be a goer. It's got to be a goer, as I said. There's a picture on their website of someone else having done this, so the idea is clearly a goer, otherwise they wouldn't have been able to do that. Right, okay, we have two motors and a caster. Get some of this junk. <clears throat> so... Let's start screwing those in, I suppose. Put away my tools. Taking up all that space, then I'm going to need to <clears throat> bin. Okay. I'll move those aside as well. We aren't needing those right, right now. Not a posy, but they look like they're the type that'll accept both. No, I think I read that wrong. Uh, where are my good tuners, screwdrivers? Very well be. They're buried in the robot cupboard, obviously from some previous robot cupboard project. That's going to do the job. Okay. 
I don't know, which way around am I going to play this? I guess it's that way around actually. So... No, we were saying that the sensors are going to be forward. It does have to be this way. That right angle header has just led to confusion now. <laughs> what I get for playing the, oh I'll do that just because it sounds interesting mm. right I'm going to take the stance I'm going to change it, fix it in code then I'll put the red wires on the inside and the black wires on the outside and if it's the wrong way round then I will just fix it in code It's interesting that they leave this many GPIO pins. Um, I have one of those doohickeys with the uh, lines on it. Is that the right way up? I guess it's going to be. This one doesn't show you the square pin, does it? Hmm. But I guess those aren't covering the same pin numbers, so I suppose that must be right. But then, wait a minute, what have we got? SDASCL. Those are SDASCL. Oh, so. Pin one's up here, pin one is here with the square pin. I might double check that. I'm assuming that that square pin matches that square pin and pin 1 is to pin 1. But that's probably an assumption if I don't check is going to be a damage to my pie moment. So let's disconnect that before I do that because that would be frustrating. Um, let's get these awful old drivers. That's what that is. So I get the feeling that although we've got basically most of what will be a moving robot here, there's going to be a, a bit of time figuring out, uh, probably going to use GPO Zero because it wouldn't take too long to, to get things up and running. Um, if that's in the right place, or, or that will be in the right place there, um, logging into this Pi and getting that going. Um, I've been going for 2 hours and 25 now, so I think I'm going to call that a night um, and come back with a stream doing this later um, and maybe there might be a few video segments before I get to the stream because um, I'm certainly going to want to tinker with it in sections but uh, I mean this is all certainly starting to look like it could be a, a small robot to run around the floor um, and I think there is something quite neat about just being able to throw a top on it like that. Okay, guys, uh, oh, guys and girls, I suppose. Um, thank you for uh, watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. There's been uh, soldering, there's been goodies, there's been descriptions of pie, party, and beer. And there's been kind of a robot build. We'll see it running, I reckon, in the next, uh, the next film. Um, so, good night, and uh, thank you for watching. Um, and uh, goodbye.